Good morning, everybody. Thursday, the the third, is it, of October, and we yeah we're starting marching on through the year, aren't we? Anyway, we're coming to the end of our two weeks as well. We've only got one more day after today for these two weeks of this school, so it's gone very, very fast. So we we are going to start reading today from Psalm 99. We just want to declare this psalm. Amen. And it's in line with the theme of the worship. We'll be singing these words uh, in one of the worship songs in a, in a short while. So let's read and declare the scriptures out loud together. Amen. Are we there? I'm there. Ready, go. Yahweh reigns. Let, Let the peoples, peoples tremble. He dwells between the cherubim. Let the earth be moved. Yahweh is great in Zion, and he is high above all peoples. Let them praise his great and awesome name. He is holy. The king's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt Yahweh our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon Yahweh, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. You answered them, O Yahweh our God. You were to them God who forgives. Though you took vengeance on their deeds, exalt Yahweh our God and worship at his holy hill. For Yahweh our God is holy. And yesterday afternoon, um, Brother Jeff brought an awesome teaching on, on worshipping in spirit and in truth. And he referred to one of the aspects of worship, and it's there in your Spirit-filled life Bible. It means to bow, to stoop, to bow down before someone as an act of submission or reverence. To worship, to fall or bow down when paying homage to God. To make oneself low is one of the meanings of that word. So if you were in that session yesterday... Just be consciously thinking about some of those things as you're worshipping today. Are we truly worshipping? And, and worship often means we give some kind of bodily response in, as an act of our worship. So let's worship this morning. Amen. So let's stand and worship our Lord. Amen. Let's stand in His presence. He's been drawing us in closer and closer every day over the last two weeks in particular as we've been gathering together in the training school and causing us to hear His roar that comes forth from Zion. Amen. Causing us to hear His voice. His voice is sweet and His face is lovely. This is the one in whom we are in His presence, the great King. The great God, the eternal one, the Lord God Almighty, the one who rules heaven and earth. This one, this is the one that we worship. His name is Jesus. And we want to give him our worship and our praise this morning. He's drawing us in. During uh, the time that we were preparing in one of the songs, I saw myself standing on a cliff and looking out over a vast plain and I saw a great eagle come and soar above, high above everything on the wind, on, the, on his wings, on the wind. Just the wind of the Spirit is wanting to cause us to soar high above today, to be able to be in that place of the rest of God, even in the peace of God, in the love of God, being in a place of refreshing and restoration and love. I believe he wants to pour out his love on us this morning. So let's worship him because he's great. Great is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. 
Israel, the king of Judah, was Hezekiah, and the Assyrians were planning to take Jerusalem, planning to come against Jerusalem and, and take it. The enemy was coming in. And Hezekiah, it says, received the letter from the hand of the messengers, and he read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of Yahweh, and he spread that letter before Yahweh. All the reproach of the enemy. The enemy saying, you've got no power, we're going to take you. All the other nations, all the other cities, they couldn't stop us. Their gods couldn't save them. You're going to be next. And Hezekiah took that letter and he went up into the house of Yahweh. And he spread that letter before Yahweh. And Hezekiah prayed before Yahweh and said, Oh Yahweh! God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim. You are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, O Yahweh, and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib. Hear the words of the enemy. Hear the words of the devil. Hear the words of his, of his minions coming against your people, which he sent to reproach the living God. Truly Yahweh, the kings of Assyria, have laid waste the nations in their lands and they've cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods. Because they were the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they destroyed them. Now therefore, O Yahweh our God, I pray. 
save us from his hand. That all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Yahweh, Elohim, you alone. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel, the messenger of Yahweh went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses, all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, the enemy, he departed. And he went away. He returned home. And he remained at Nineveh. Yahweh God, the one who dwells between the cherubim. You are God. You alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. And so we bring, and I encourage you right now even just to bring, bring your nation before Yahweh, Elohim, the one who dwells between the cherubim. Bring, bring your nation to Jesus, the one who dwells between the cherubim, the one who's on the mercy seat. See, especially in the Western world that we've noticed, the enemies come in very reproachfully, thinking, I can take over. I can, I can take over all the institutions. I can take over all these schooling. I can take over everything. And his sights are set on silencing the church. Silencing God's people. But Yahweh, we spread that letter before you this morning. We spread that letter that where the enemy has reproached the living God. Reproached Yeshua HaMashiach. Reproached Jesus the Messiah tried to take him out of everything public in our nations. Trying to push down the church. Trying to say the church is the one with the problem. We spread that letter before you. We spread that letter before you, Lord. Jesus. We say, God... Lord Jesus, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see. And deliver your people. Save your people. Deliver your people. Deliver the indigenous community of this nation of Australia. Deliver all the other communities, different ethnic communities that make up this nation of Australia. Lord, deliver all of the ethnoses, all of the people groups, all the tongues that are in this nation. In the name of Jesus. Deliver Uganda. Deliver Kenya. Deliver England. Nigeria. Deliver Finland. Russia. Deliver Colombia and South America and Central America. And then, Lord, let your church arise. Let your glorious church arise. Because you're the, you alone are God. And let all the kingdoms of the earth, let all the nations of the earth know that you, Jesus, you alone are God. Hallelujah. Lord Jehovah, we, we bring before you the European Union and its, its attempt to, to colonize all the European nations to make them part of a greater European power that is godless that has some seductive goddess as their, on their flag and on their, on their what they represent their banner their banner is a is a seductive blonde lady devoted to seduction usurping and evil for the peoples of Europe Lord we we bring that before you that 
that Treaty of, of Lisbon, where the leaders of the of so-called free countries signed away their future, gave their sovereignty to the European Parliament. Will we bring that terrible part of history that's sort of been hidden from us. It's been regarded as good and right. We're seeing now it's an evil kingdom. Father, we bring before you the United Nations, which we also thought might, might be okay, might do some good. But we see they're committed to evil, to abortion, to homosexuality as being the norm of transgenderism ruling the nations. Lord, we bring the United Nations before you. Lord, we bring China and its president who's had himself put in office for life. Lord, and in their parade of the day, they're magnifying Mao Zedong, who's, who killed millions of Chinese people in his quest for communist power. Lord, we bring the Chinese kingdom before you and their, their open attempt to colonize the nations of the world in Africa and the island nations of the Pacific. To infiltrate the, the Western nations through business, through IT. Lord, we bring China before you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we bring Russia before you that that is again rising to, to squash Christianity, to only allow the, the state church to, to exist in freedom because it submits to the communist rule. Well, it's not, they don't call themselves communists anymore, but Lord, to the rule of President Putin and his minions. Lord, we bring Russia before you. And Lord, we declare the word of God that you are high above. You're high above all the peoples, all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. In Jesus' name we pray. We also bring before you the United States of America. And Father, I lift up before you, that's the Speaker of the House, that Lady Nancy Pelosi the whole Democrat Party that just wants to impeach Trump just because they want to impeach Trump. Father, we pray that you expose every hidden work of darkness, that you expose everything that needs to be exposed, that the nations of the earth, including the United States, would know that Jesus is God, that the Lord Jehovah reigns, that the peoples tremble. God, we thank you that you've given us authority. We thank you that the high praises of God in our mouth, a two-edged sword in our hand, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters. So we come to you today, the one who dwells between the cherubim. Let your great and awesome name be known in all the nations. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Chile. I will meet you there. I will meet you there. Between the wings of the cherubim, I will meet you there. I will speak with you.
this is the time when we come to the table of the Lord. Because the cherubim was the mercy seat of God. And it was on that mercy seat that the blood was placed. And it's because of the blood on the mercy seat in heaven above that we are able to come and partake of the body and the blood of Jesus. He made a way. So those who I've asked to serve, if they'd come forward, please, and start passing out the, the juice and the, and the biscuit. Thank you, Jesus. So on the Day of Atonement, what happened on the Day of Atonement? It was when the, the high priest took the blood that was of the bull that was, that was slain and he took that blood all the way in to the very holiest of holies, into the holy place and put the blood on the mercy seat. And then he was able to come out and declare to the children of Israel that all the sins of the people had been forgiven. And so they could rejoice and be glad because they knew that their sins had been forgiven. But for us, Jesus became that, that sacrifice. And so we no longer have to have a sacrifice done daily or, or weekly or yearly for us of a bull or a lamb or a goat because Jesus himself became that sinless, spotless lamb and his blood was shed once and for all, the scripture says. And so we are able to know that because of what Jesus did, we have an advocate, we have a mediator, we have one who goes before and who has gone to the mercy seat and put his blood on that mercy seat so that we now have free access into the very presence of God. So we thank God for the blood on the mercy seat. And if you, in your mind, have that picture of, of what we've just been singing, commune with me, be between the wings of the cherubim, we've been singing, commune with me. And, in, and when we read of the daily offerings in, in Exodus 29, one of the wonderful things that God said to Moses at that time when he was talking about those morning and evening sacrifices that under the law they had to do, God said to them that at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord, that's where I will meet with you and speak with you. And so between the wings of the cherubim, God says, I will speak with you. He wants to meet with us and he wants to speak to us even as we come to the table of the Lord. This is a time for listening. This is a time for opening our spirits up to, to receive from him what he might want to say to you today, what he want, might want to encourage you with today. We can hear his voice. We can know his presence because it's Jesus that we are coming to remember. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, God spoke, Jesus spoke these words on the night that he was betrayed and he said to take this, this bread and to break it and to remember him. He said to take the cup, which was the blood of the new covenant that he was shedding for, for the sins, for the remission of sins for many and, be, and remember him. And so as we come today, we're, we're focusing on Jesus, the one who took away our sins. We're not focusing on our sin. We're focusing on the one who came to take away our sins. And that blood on the mercy seat gives us free access into his presence. So have that expectation. We're meeting with that holy God we've been singing about today. Holy God, we've been honouring him. And he may want to meet with you there and speak with you. So we thank you, Jesus, for your body and your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that we have this wonderful privilege of of just participating in something that brings you right into our midst. You are central in our midst, Lord, when, as we remember you at the table. We thank you for that blood on the mercy seat. We thank you that because of your blood, we can have free access into your presence, meeting with you in that most holy place, beneath the wings of the cherubim, where you commune with us, where you meet with us, and where you speak with us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's partake.
Thank you, Jesus. That this is a place where you will speak to us and whisper into our hearts those words that you want to bring to encourage us, to, to build us up, to instruct us. Hallelujah. And he and he is the suitable man. <laughs> we are. Amen. Zion is a throne, and from beneath the throne flows a river of water, the water of life coming forth. We're in that river today, amen. Just drink freely from the water of life today.
as you sing over me. It's a song of hope, breathing life into me. I can feel your touch as I come close to you. And it heals my heart, you restore and renew. that water to wash over you. Just see yourself flows from the throne, bringing the supply of the water of life, a never-ending, eternal, everlasting flow of the water of life coming forth from the throne, from Yahweh, from Jehovah, the great and mighty one forth from him to you that allowed to heal you allowed to refresh you allowed to wash you allowed to energize you even in the spirit today thank you jesus drink deeply from the water of life thank you jesus Father, we also pray, I just want to lift up Myanmar to the Lord, that that river of life flow right now into that nation of Myanmar. There's a team that will be going from here in less than three weeks. And Father, we pray for this nation, for the living water, the water of life, to flow into the nation of Myanmar in the name of Jesus. But we thank you for this river that is flowing from the throne. We thank you for this river, Lord, that brings healing to nations. Father, we lift them up right now too as they're in that water festival thing going on. Many Christians preaching the gospel to Buddhists at this time. God, we pray for the river of life to flow. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the water of life flow freely. And let there be a hunger and a thirst for that living water in the nation of Myanmar. In Jesus' name, amen.